Thank you very much fellow Kenyans. I'm Babu Oweno. I'm a member of parliament for Mbakasi's constituency. Today I want to talk about the reason why I will vote no for the finance bill that is coming up for the third reading stage. Number one, I would like to talk about economics and generally dissect this finance bill and whether it is good for Kenyans or not. And the simple conclusion is that this finance bill is very hazardous, very unhealthy, very depressing, very traumatizing for Kenyans. And therefore, Kenyans must never accept it. And basically, I want to uh, advise Ruto, William Ruto, that if you must lie, then you must lie like a priest. How does a priest lie? There was a priest who was crossing a border, accompanied by another lady. This lady carried something that she ought to have declared at the border. Then the lady requested the priest that if the priest could carry what the lady had so that they could cross over because the priest was a frequent or rather a regular uh, traveler. So the lady took what she had put in the priest's pocket. Upon reaching where they were supposed to declare whatever they had, the security officer asked the priest, Bwana priest, what do you have to declare? The priest said, from my belt upwards, I have nothing to declare. Then the security officer asked the priest, what about from your belt downwards? The priest said that from my belt downwards, I have something precious to ladies. <laughs> then basically, the security officer smiled and let the priest pass. pass. So I want to advise Ruto, if you must lie, lie like a priest. Number one, I want to discuss or rather base my argument on economics and what we call the macroeconomic fundamentals. Number two, I will talk about whether this finance bill will, will give us more revenue or not. And number three, I want to talk about absorption. And in absorption, as used in economics, absorption equals to government expenditure plus consumption plus private investment. So generally, I want to advise Ruto, William Ruto, because seemingly is being advised by people who have lost their minds. In simple words, people who are mad. Because a nation is not run like a kiosk. A nation is not run like a toilet. Back to economics. What did the government want to achieve by this finance bill? We find that by the introduction of many taxes, or rather increasing taxes, literally means that the government will not collect the required amount of money. Why? Because if you increase taxes in a nation, you reduce the aggregate demand. If you reduce the aggregate demand, you reduce consumption of those goods and services. The moment you reduce the consumption of goods and services in a nation, then it means that people will not buy. People will look for alternatives. Kenya, as things are, we consume over 80% of imported goods, ranging from toothpick to eggs, to tissue papers, uh, to motor vehicles, to clothing, to clothing. Basically, we consume over 80% of imported goods. And I will come there after a few minutes when I talk about absorption and how Mexico managed to get out of, uh, to constrain absorption. So. If we talk about the issue of housing, the government has decided to tax employers and employees. They said that they reduced it to 1.5%. What does this have? What is the net result? What are the consequences of the introduction of the 1.5% tax on housing? Number one, 
the government should never concentrate on private goods. Private goods are goods like housing, construction of houses. They should just create an enabling environment for them, for people to build their own houses. First, houses, lack of houses is never a problem in Kenya. It is not one of the major challenges Kenyans are facing. Kenyans have different challenges ranging from unemployment to matter school fee to high cost of living and others. Number two, the government should focus on public goods like the construction of roads, proper infrastructure. The government should also focus on merit goods. And merit goods are goods like education and health. So private goods should never be con concentrated on. What should the government do? The government should create an enabling environment for people to construct their own houses. If there is any land lying fallow and this land has electricity, this land has water, this land has proper road networks, then the government should ensure that they reduce the cost of lands, land for an individual, for Kenyans, so that they are in a position to purchase land and construct their houses. If they are employed, in, uh, if they are employed, then these people can start even by constructing uh, Mabati houses. Then thereafter, they can graduate into constructing uh, more modern houses. Number two, to solve this issue of housing, the government must be in a position to develop proper infrastructure system in Kenya, develop proper roads, introduce the idea of the electric train. If you bring up the idea of the electric train, then a person in Naivasha can come to Nairobi within 10 minutes, work and go back to Naivasha. People in Kiambu can come to Nairobi within five minutes. People in Nakuru, people in Kisumu, people in, uh, in, 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 uh, in Kajiado, they can easily come to Nairobi, work and go back. So houses should never be a main problem. And the government should not punish people for being employed. Already you are punish, punishing people for not giving them jobs. You should not punish people for being employed by deducting their income, which is 1.5%. So the issue of housing, number one, will lead to more slums sprouting. How does this happen? It happens when people will know that if there are houses being provided in urban centers, then they will move from rural areas to the urban areas. And this will create what we call a dual economy. Dual economy means that there will be a rural economy and an urban economy. So this is very detrimental to our nation because the people in the rural will be extremely poor and in urban areas where people will be migrating from the rural areas to urban areas, it means that people in urban areas will be so many, there will be no jobs, there will be high level of crime in urban areas. If you want to finish a slum like Kibra or Soweto in Mbakasi's constituency, most slums will come up because people will think that houses are being given to them. So that alone is going to mess this nation. Number two, introduction of this tax on employees for the housing, affordable housing, on employees. What does this mean? It means that employees will cease employing people. Why? Because they will not want to employ more people so that they pay more to the government as they are taxed. So it means that there will be an introduction of capital, the machines, to do the work that's supposed to be done by human beings. So this introduction of the how affordable housing will also lead to unemployment. So if you ask me about housing, it is a baldadash, pure nonsensical. It is something that does, that does not add value to our nation. Just create an enabling environment, let people build their own houses. Number two, on the issue of, uh, on the issue of, uh, of uh, introduction of high taxes on fuel. What the government is doing is killing this nation. If you increase fuel, you literally increase the value of 
anything, any good and service that is supposed to be transported or exported from one area to the other. So what is the government doing? If you increase that machines that are used in the farm, are using fuel, therefore the cost of production will be high, the cost of manufacturing will be high, agricultural produce, their cost will be high because they must be transported from one area to the other. Their seedlings are transported from one area to the other. Even fertilizer is transported from one area to the other. To the other. Therefore their cost will go up automatically. Therefore you are even killing the agriculture industry, the production uh, uh, or rather the manufacturing industry, you are killing all these industries. Now, what will happen? People will stop using uh, their cars. People will start using alternative ways like walking to work. Some will start pulling their cars. Some will use bicycles, motorcycles. Some will use matatus. And that you can see what that is going to cause to Kenyans. Therefore, the government should literally Stop the idea of increasing tax on fuel because it will lead to high cost of living. Instead, as I said, that Kenya, we depend on 80% of imported goods. With this 80% of imported goods, our economy, every money that we get in our economy mostly will go to the foreign companies will go to the foreign countries. There's a leakage and most of our money will be used in, in foreign countries. Our nation, we consume 80%, over 80% of foreign goods, as I said, ranging from toothpick to eggs, to even chicken, to tissue papers, to clothes, to motor vehicles, so many things, over 80%. And with the consumption of that, what should the government do if we are now concentrating on consuming so many foreign goods? Therefore, the government should introduce what we call the mercantilism, the mercantile system or mercantilism, which is a form of economic nationalism. The government should introduce that concept where we depend less on imported goods and we export more goods. We introduce manufacturing industries in our country to provide jobs and, it, and mercantilism is the best way to provide jobs in our nation. We introduce that so that the goods that we export can earn us foreign income. Instead of Kenya as a nation, we say we want to depend on, ag on agriculture, but even what we produce from agriculture in itself does not sustain us. So the introduction of the tax on fuel, or rather the fuel levy, will really further bring the high cost of living, living to its optimum. Kenyans are going to suffer. What is this government doing which is so wrong? Because I, at some point, somebody can think that they want to reduce absorption, but that is not the case. In the reduction of absorption, and absorption equals to consumption plus government expenditure plus private investment. When there was a big problem in Mexico, where Mexicans or rather Mexico as a country could not pay its debt, it, re it resolved into constraining absorption and conversion of the debts. So many American companies were set up in Mexico, they were doing businesses in Mexico, and the money was leaking back to America. So what did the Mexicans do? They lowered absorption, they constrained absorption and the businessmen from America who were in Mexico had to move from Mexico back to their countries and the money was no longer leaking. The money was being spent into the Mexico economy. In our country, what is happening? We are doing the opposite. 
we are encouraging the foreign investment in our country. For example, look at the ABSA Bank. ABSA Bank registered 46 billion profit in its first quarter. By the end of the year, they shall have registered 200 billion, approximately 200 billion Kenya shillings as a profit. On the other hand, the government has decided to reduce the corporate income tax, which we call the CIT, abbreviated as CIT, from 35% to 30%, meaning that the government is losing 5%. So if we take 5% of 200 billion Kenya shillings, we get 1 billion. So the government is losing 1 billion from the corporate income tax and wants to tax the normal Kenyan and recover that one billion from there and from an ordinary Kenyan, which does not make sense at all. So the government's intention is not to constrain absorption, is to kill Kenyans. Because we ought to have increased that tax for the corporate income tax for the foreign companies that is making our economy, or rather the money, the economy of the Kenya leak into other economies. Our money is being invested outside because ABSA is not a Kenyan-based company. It is based in South Africa. Therefore, why are we giving all the money that Kenyans are making in Kenya to ABSA and taking it back to South Africa? We should tax that heavily so that that money, we can benefit from it. Because if we take a profit of 200 billion to South Africa, what are we remaining with here in Kenya? So because the government is not considerate and they are allowing a lot of nonsense, huh? so basically this finance bill is going to destroy the lives of Kenyans. The finance bill, you're even financing Mamamboga who are, who are, who are doing the cham the chama system, the 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 merry-go-rounds. <laughs> and indeed, this bottom-up means taking money from the bottom, from the mamambogas, from the hustlers, taking it up in form of a tax. And that up there, it is an automatic, uh, there's an automatic result that the money will disappear. So if you look at economics, this idea of a finance bill has failed. And I can assure you, that in the next financial year, Kenya is not going to collect a revenue more than two trillion. Why? Because if you increase tax, you reduce the aggregate demand, you reduce the consumption. Therefore, you cannot collect, as simple as that. So whoever is advising uh, William Ruto, I think that person must, must have come from another planet, not from a planet. Thank you and God bless you.